What layer blend modes do is alter the look of one of your layers when you see it next to another. That sounds complicated, but all it means in practice is you have this drop down here. And if I just move down, you can see that top layer, that series of circles, changing its look by comparison to the layers underneath. And yes, there are lots of them, aren't there? And this is one of those things that people have a lot of difficulty with, or should I say, the thought of learning what every single one of these blend modes does and why you would use them just seems like too big a task and so people tend to give up on it because they don't have the information and also they don't really understand the concept. So let's explain the concepts and let's give you the information. Okay, so before I dive into these, there are five things that you should know about layer blend modes. Point number one, any and every layer is always in one of the layer blend modes. Now by default, that is this one here, normal. You create a new layer, it comes in in normal blend mode. Point number two, they normally work by changing the look of the layer that's below them. For example, with this, with multiply mode, the top layer kind of disappears but the layer underneath, now you can see it, but it's darker because multiply is one of the dark and layer blend modes. But more on that in a bit. But the thing is, they don't permanently alter the look of the layer below them. What they're actually doing is working on the brightness values or the luminance values of both of the layers. Every single pixel of that top layer has a pixel lying underneath it of that fruit layer lying directly below. And so what Affinity Designer actually does is to look at the brightness or luminance values of the top pixel plus the pixel lying directly below and converts them both into a luminance value, zero for black and one for white. And then it does various bits of math on those two values to come up with a new brightness value. That is why you have, cer that is why you have certain names like multiply or difference or average. That looks like it's a reference to the mathematics that's being done on those two values. Point number three, you've already seen this. You can change the layer blend mode of a layer at any time. It's not fixed in stone. Point number four, if I create a new layer, it starts out at 100% opacity right here, but you can alter that at any time. So the possibilities of that many layer blend modes gets multiplied by 100, in one go. And the fact of the matter is when you're working with layer blend modes, you probably will alter the opacity quite often. Now, the final point is they are divided into logical groups and that's what I want to take a look at first. I'm not going to go through every single blend mode and explain exactly what it's doing because you have that PDF which gives you that reference, but also it's going to take so long, you're going to get overloaded and you're gonna get bored. Instead, do you notice how these blend modes have a little gray line in between the various different groups of names? That is because blend modes are divided up into groups. And once you know what the groups do, your life suddenly gets much easier. So the top one, normal. Well, that's just your default. And what I've got here is some lovely fruit in the background, plus a circle here, which is completely black, a circle here, which is a bang on mid gray and a circle here, which is completely white. I also have a gradient underneath, which goes from completely black through to completely mid gray through to completely white, plus a series of circles above of the various different primaries. So apart from normal, you have these modes here. These are the darken layer blend modes, and they all work by making the layer underneath them appear to be darker. And you can see that, look, darken. Everything underneath has got darkened. If I come back to normal, look at my white circle. When I convert it to darken, it becomes completely invisible. That mid gray has gone kind of darker, but in a grayish kind of a way, and the black is completely opaque. Look at the gradient underneath. At the darker end, the darkest part of it is completely opaque. You can't see the layer underneath. Then you get various different darker shades of the underneath fading out to completely invisible when you get to that light bit at the end. Compare that with multiply. It does the same thing, but look, if I compare the two, that's darken, that's multiply. Multiply is giving us what many would think to be a slightly nicer effect. It looks a little bit more natural. And if you want to make something darker, then multiply is one of the good blend modes. Okay, so for the rest of the darken blend modes, they all do the same thing, but in different ways. 
darker color is a bit different. What's happening here is that Affinity Designer is looking at both layers, pixel by pixel, and deciding which layer has the darkest pixel. And whichever one is the darkest, that's what you end up seeing on the screen. And if you take a minute to look at that, it kind of makes sense. Take the pixels of that gradient at the bottom, for example. Most of those pixels are darker than the apple underneath, and so you see them. But if you take a look at the lighter end of the spectrum, well, the apple and the orange, they're darker than the actual gradient, so you see the apple and the orange. That's dark, and underneath it, you have... Go on, guess what these do? Yes, these are the lighten blend modes. Darken at the top, lighten underneath. And they do a very similar thing, but the opposite. They make everything lighter, like this. See, lighter colour. Of the two layers, whichever one has the lighter pixel, that's what gets shown. Now, out of these, screen tends to be the one which is favoured by people when they're doing some real-world photographic work. It tends to give the most pleasing results. Lighten, along with darken, tends to give a rather a grey finish to the overall effect. Screen, yeah, you're getting something nicer. Colour dodge, along with colour burn, tends to give a much stronger effect. And that can be a bit over the top. All right, so underneath you have the contrast blend modes. The darkened blend modes made things darker. The lightened blend modes made things lighter. The contrast blend mode, they make things darker and lighter. I want you to take a look, if I go back to normal for a second, at that mid gray circle sitting about the middle of the picture. If I come to overlay, because it is mid-grey, it completely disappears. But then take a look at the black circle on the left. Well, that's making things darker. Take a look at the white circle on the right. That's making things lighter. Take a look at the gradient at the bottom. You can see it's pretty dark at one end, pretty light at the other, but it fades into nothing at the mid-tones. And that simple fact leads to a whole load of different modern special effects. Soft light does the same thing and what overlay is, is a combination of multiply blend mode and screen blend mode, both of them set to half strength. So it's a combination of this at half strength and this at half strength, and is very, very useful. Now, all of these are contrast layer blend modes, and they all just do variations of the same thing. Soft light, the same thing, but more of a gentle effect. Hard light, the same thing, but a more intense effect because hard light is a mixture of screen and multiply at full strength, they all just do variations, darker and lighter. Now hard mix is one of the blend modes. You end up with up to eight colors, red, green, blue, cyan, magenta, yellow, black, and white. All the primaries, all the secondaries, plus black and white. But the trick with this is, if you start lowering the opacity from 100% down, you start to see more colours starting to peep through and the effect gets more subtle. I must admit I don't have much use for hard mix. So far the useful ones are multiply, screen, then overlay soft light, hard light, sometimes vivid light, sometimes linear light, very occasionally pin light, but for day-to-day -day work it's going to be overlay soft light, hard light, screen and multiply. Now underneath you have what is probably the most obscure group out of all of them, difference, exclusion, and subtract. I've heard them called the comparative group or the inversion or subtraction stroke cancellation group. These are very obscure. I've described what they do inside the PDF, but for day-to-day -day purposes, apart from doing one or two rather obscure special effects, I've never used these in my work. They're very limited. Underneath though, you have something called the component group. Now these are useful. Now one thing I should point out, this may turn up in your screen as well. If you take a look at that gradient at the bottom, you can see some, it looks like some magenta and green pixels kind of scattered on the image. That is a graphical glitch from the computer. Under normal circumstances, you don't see something like that. Now to explain what they do, I'll quickly call up a HSL layer. I've been using this quite a lot recently, so hopefully you've got a clear idea that you get three components here. The hue component, the saturation component, and the luminosity component. The hue is all the colors of the rainbow, the saturation is how saturated the colors are, and the luminosity is how dark or light those colors are. And I will delete that. Because what the component groups do is to look at the layers in their component parts in terms of color, in terms of saturation, and in terms of lightness. That is three different components. And you end up looking with two of the components from one layer and one of the components from the upper layer. For example, this hue. 
This gives you the luminance and the saturation from the lower layer with the hues of the top layer. And that's why I put those little blobs of color at the top so you can see this. For example, take a look now under normal mode, most of those are at full saturation. But once you take it back to hue again, they're taking the saturation from the lower layer along with the brightness or the luminance. All of a sudden they become a lot more knocked back. Now take a look at saturation. Now you've got the saturation of this top layer with the luminosity and the hue from the bottom layer. Compare that with color. This keeps the hue and saturation of that top layer and combines it with the brightness of the layer underneath it. I mean, take a look at my gradient at the bottom, for example. Under normal mode, that is just black to gray to white. But under color mode, it's keeping the brightness of the layers underneath it. Same with those squares at the top. Because they are various shades of gray, they don't really have a color and they definitely don't have a saturation, so they become irrelevant. The only thing that becomes relevant here is the brightness of the layer underneath. So you end up with this black and white effect. Those blobs of color at the top, well, they keep their color and they keep how saturated they are, but they take on the brightness of the layer underneath. And then if you take a look at luminosity. Well, in the case of this, the top layer, which is the layer I've changed, keeps the luminosity or the lightness values, but it takes on the hue and the saturation of the layers below. Okay, now so far we've got all the blend modes that a program like Photoshop is going to give us, but with Affinity Photo, you get a little bit more. Average is like setting the top layer to about 50% opacity on normal blend mode and it's good for moderating extreme effects. Negation is like the difference blend mode, but it's additive. So those brightness values of the pixels are added together, which gives some rather interesting effects. Now reflect, the description I've heard is that it darkens the image using values from the top layer. And this blend mode can be good for enhancing things like reflections or rough textures or areas of light. Glow does something very similar to reflect, but it swaps the layer order, so it brightens up the image using values from the blend layer. Contrast negate, if I ever find out what that layer is doing, I will let you know. And erase acts a bit like a clipping mask. Any solid area of pixels on the top make the bottom layer transparent. And if I move that around, yep, you can see that in action. And that is the layer blend modes. Normal blend mode, the one you've been using for most of this course, then darken, lighten, contrast, the obscure group, the components, the extras that Affinity Photo gives you, and finally right at the bottom, erase, which cuts things out. Not that hard, is it? Okay, I'll give you a break now, and let's move on to the next video.